Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Saturday the 30th of July 2022 and we're publishing our gold and silver weekly update for the week ending the 29th of July. This episode is a little longer than usual because we have now entered a phase where some analysts believe a pivot is in the process of occurring and others see this as a false breakout in a precious metals bear market. So wasting no more time, let's take a look and see what's happened. Gold rose $38 last week, rising from $1,728 to $1,766, having hit a high of $1,768 and a low of $1,713, a rise of 2.2%. In sterling terms, gold finished the week at £1,450, that's up £11, and in euros it closed at €1,727, that's up €35. Euros. Silver rose $1.75, rising from $18.64 to $20.39, having hit a high of $20.39, in other words, closing at its high, and a low of $18.34, a rise of 9.4%, a very creditable rise. In sterling terms, silver closed at £16.74, that's up £1.21 an ounce, and in euros, it closed at 19.93 euros. That's up 1.68 euros an ounce. The gold to silver ratio fell from 92.7 to 86.6 to 1. Now, looking at the prediction we made last week, we said we expect to see gold trade between 1650 and 1775, with 1600 and 1800 as outliers. We forecast silver would trade between 1775 and 1975 with $17.2025 as outliers. Well, gold traded within a range of $55 and kept well within our normal trading range, but towards the upper end. Silver traded within a larger band than usual, $2.05. We're used to seeing silver trade around the dollar to a dollar twenty mark. And it closed at its week's high some 14 cents above our outlier range. Though it traded within our normal range virtually until Friday. And then we saw this steep gain, which we shall comment on shortly. But before we do that, let's look at some of the other financials. Bitcoin has risen again this past week by $2,080 and currently stands at $24,210. Equities were also high this past week. Dow Jones closed on Friday at 32,845, up 315 points on the day, but up 946 points on the week. The S&P 500 closed at 4,130, up 57 on the day, but up 169 on the week. And the Nasdaq Composite closed at 12,390, up 228 points on the day, that's Friday, and up 556 points on the week. Brent crude closed at $103.97, up 77 cents, and WTI crude closed at $98.62, up $3.92 on the week. We pointed out last week there was a disparity between those two prices, and we expected them to correct, and this is what they've done. The dollar index stands at 105.90, that's actually down 0.83 points on the week. And we have to bear in mind it was as high as 109 less than two weeks ago. Now, as we expressed last week, the two most important days were going to be the FOMC decision on Wednesday on interest rates, which, as it happens, they raised them by 0.75 basis points, and then the PCE figures on Friday. We predicted the Fed would raise rates by three quarters of a percent, which they did, though some thought 1% was indeed likely and could not have been ruled out. The PCE figures were awful in reality, and we could see that both gold and silver rose after the FOMC announcement, even though it was relatively hawkish. Why? Because the statement thereafter had been interpreted by some to be a little dovish. And this is the balancing act the Fed has to adopt in order not to tank the equity market. 
though it has no obligation to maintain the equity market, financial stability is their goal. And having an equity market that is collapsing could arguably be against the concept of financial stability, but that's a debate for another day. But the PCE on Friday pointed out that inflation is not under control. And so we saw gold and silver prices rise dramatically. That announcement, the PCE announcement, seemed to have created a pivot in analysts' minds, moving from being worried about higher rates to being more worried about inflation. Now, technical analyst Gary Wagner encapsulated this really nicely in an article that he published on FX Empire yesterday. So we shall take a look at Gary's article and then we'll comment on it thereafter. And this is why the video is slightly longer than usual. FX Empire report dated 29th of July by Gary Wagner. Recent reports confirm high inflation and rising rates have led to a recession. Key fundamentals. Gold and silver prices have moved to new multi-week highs in response to three major reports and events that have confirmed what the American public has been acutely aware of for some time. First, that inflation is running rampant and continues to spiral out of control to higher levels. Based on the latest CPI numbers, inflation is running at a 41-year high of 9.1%. This is despite dramatic and extremely hawkish action by the Federal Reserve which has raised interest rates over the last four consecutive FOMC meetings in higher increments. Beginning in March, the Fed raised rates by 25 basis points. The following FOMC meeting in May resulted in the Fed raising rates by 50 basis points. This was followed by 75 basis point rate hikes at both the June and July FOMC meeting. Despite the dramatic attempt to reduce inflation, the core CPI reported a few weeks ago had a fractional decline from 5.9 to 5.7%. However, today the government reported that the core PCE index, price index, increased by 0.5%. This means that PCE prices are expected to be up 6.6% year on year, and core PCE prices are up 4.7% year on year. These latest reports indicate that the Federal Reserve's aggressive rate hikes have been ineffective in reducing headline and core inflation. Recent rate hikes by the Federal Reserve have taken the Fed funds rate from near zero to 2.25%, leading to only one major accomplishment, if you can call it that. They have effectively contracted the US economy for the last two consecutive quarters. It is emphatically clear that the United States economy has met the definition of a recession regardless of what the government wants us to believe. Therefore, yesterday and today's extremely robust move in both gold and silver are highly warranted and long overdue. Whatever spin the President and other political entities are conveying to falsely express that the American economy is robust and growing is going against the grain of truth. GDP of the last two quarters by definition infers that we have entered or in a recession. US dollar declines, the dollars had significant decline in value. After hitting a high above 109 during the week of July the 11th, the dollar index is now below 106. This is a 3% decline in value in the last three weeks. At the same time, we've seen spot gold rise from a low of 1683 last week and gain approximately $102 as of the close of trading today. Silver has had a dramatic run over the last two days, gaining 7.45% on Thursday and an additional 2.35% today, taking the most active September silver contract at 20.33. Traders and market participants have finally pivoted their primary focus from rising interest rates to rising inflation. The most recent data from the government clearly defines the utter failure of the Federal Reserve's attempt to bring inflation to an acceptable level. Unquestionably, we most likely will see both gold and silver to continue to run to higher pricing. End of article. Now, providing we've interpreted him correctly, Gary seems rather bullish precious metal prices. The problem we have with that, though, is that if he truly believes the recession is upon us, then the industrial demand for silver will fall. And with rising rates still on the horizon, though admittedly not for nearly eight weeks now, we could very well see both gold and more so silver fall 
significantly from current levels. Now, with both ending near week's high on Friday, there may be some follow-through early next week and perhaps through the course of the next week or two. And so prices could still go higher. But we believe it's a false breakout. And this will correct before the next FOMC meeting and interest rate declaration on the 21st of September. But a lot can happen between now and then. Now, the key area for gold, if it wishes to show that it is now in an uptrend, is to see that it breaks easily through 1800 and then 1832, which is where the 50-week EMA rests. We foresee major resistance here and most certainly at the psychological level of 1850 and suspect, quite frankly, that we could very well see some major selling at these levels. Silver has to sail through $21.50 before we believe an uptrend is in place. And if it falls back down to $18, then we can expect to see a fall very quickly down to $16.50. Of course, there'll be some support points at $17.50 and $1,700. But if $16.50 is then breached, we could go lower down to $15, which is what we mentioned last week. The issue for many will be, are gold and silver seen now more beneficial as an inflation hedge compared with the risks associated with higher interest rates? We should remember that last week's official figures from the Commerce Department, US GDP fell 0.9% on an annualized basis in the second quarter. This follows first quarter GDP data showing the US economy shrank by 1.6% in the first three months of 2022. This confusion and apprehension between inflation hedge versus moving into a recession versus potentially even higher rates in eight weeks' time will, in our view, cause quite significant volatility over the next few weeks. At the same time, whilst the US dollar has fallen from its index high of 109, it's still holding up strongly and economists and traders know that the US dollar has a huge negative correlation to this market. We must also pay close attention to the bond markets in America because the interest rate correlation is negative and therefore if interest rates rise, silver prices particularly falls. The exact opposite is also true. So we have to bear that in mind for those who believe we're in a position of pivot. Now, we've got some important data being announced this week. On Monday, we have the S&P Manufacturing PMI finals for July and the ISM Manufacturing Index for July and construction spending for May. On Tuesday, job openings and quits for June, real household debt for quarter two and motor vehicle sales for July. Wednesday, the S&P US Services PMI Finals for July and the ISM Services Index for July, important data, and factory orders for June. Thursday, weekly jobless claims and the trade deficit for June. And then on Friday, the all-encompassing non-farm payrolls, unemployment rate and average hourly earnings, all for July. And in fact, consumer credit for June. So we have quite a raft of data that's critically important and would have been more so important had we not already had the FOMC announcement. If this had appeared before the announcement, then this would have had such a major impact. So, the data being announced over the next few weeks will cause the volatility that we mentioned earlier, but the most important data will be that reported, quite frankly, just before the 21st of September when the FOMC makes its next decision on interest rates and clawing back further quantitative easing. Now, we stated last week, silver certainly seems to have support at $18 and resistance at 20, with super strong resistance at 21. Perhaps the gloomiest of predictions among serious analysts is an eventual silver price of $15, though some have touted 12 at some stage, though we sus it may take some time to get to 15 if it does. With this in mind, and the serious potential of greater volatility this coming week, we expect to see gold trade between 1700 and 1800 as normal trading, with 1675 and 1850 as outliers. We also forecast silver is going to trade a little higher than 
perhaps the previous week between 1850 and 21 with $18.22 as outliers. What do you think? Do you believe we've reached the pivot and silver and gold are now on the way back up as some of the pumpers will have you believe? Or do you think, like us, this is a breakout perhaps for a short time, maybe a few weeks, maybe a month or two, but that we will see lower prices once again? Do let us know. Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Not forgetting to press the bell sign so you're notified of our videos as and when they're published. We're going to produce this video again tomorrow, but under a different thumbnail and head heading. But meanwhile, we wish you a safe, enjoyable weekend. And whatever happens to silver and gold prices, we hope you'll have a very prosperous week ahead. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.